So, you want to make the strawberry dress. Great. Spoiler alert, I'm not actually gonna make one. I am gonna give you all the tips I can think of to help you to make one if you really want to. Um, I'm also gonna do a little prelude of trying to talk you out of it. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what fabrics you'll need and where you can buy them. Um, I'm gonna tell you some pattern resources um, if you wanna use a commercial pattern um, and some sewing tips for working with tulle. Alrighty, let's go. So, hi, my name's Simone. I have a little business called Goblin Fruit um, through which I occasionally have a fashion line. I have done my fair share of making dresses out of tulle. Um, like the one you can see behind me here, this is the snowflake dress. Um, this is the sample that I made in, I'm going to say 2017 for Perth Fashion Festival. Um, here are some photos. And I, before that, the year before that, I also had another dress which is completely sold out, which is the bad girl dress, which was this dress. Uh, so. That was 2016, which is about the same time that Lyrica Matoshi started her label and brought us to the wonderful world of the strawberry dress. Uh, in case you haven't heard, and I've heard about it, so it's pretty viral, the strawberry dress is this viral fantasy poofy number that has been described as an amazingly fun party dress and also fit for a toddler, <laughs> which kind of is what it is. The Tulle dress revival probably came around a couple of years before either of us as designers. Oh, when did, with Molly Goddard. Whenever Molly Goddard did that collection for, I think it was her graduate collection at Central St. Martins, which photos here of what Molly Goddard does. So there's lots and lots of amazing things that you can do with tulle. The reason why designers like it, I guess, well, it's, it's very cheap. It's really, really cheap. So you can have huge amounts of volume and get these fun, like, big dresses. Okay, so let's talk about Lyrica Matoshi's dress. So there aren't quite a number of different let dresses on her label, including dresses like this, which have all the pom-pom effect. Um, but this one is the one that's become very, very famous. There are lots of articles um, about why it's gone viral and YouTube videos. I'll pop a couple below. There's like a Vogue one and lots of YouTube videos um, about the dress and lots of YouTubers who've made the dress as well. So you don't need me to make you one. I can, I can just help. I'll just give you the tips and um, save me the time and the heartache and the curse words, because there would be plenty. Tulle is actually a pretty forgiving fabric to work with. It just requires patience, because if you get your seams wrong or things are kind of gathered a bit oddly or whatever, it's not really that noticeable. Um, it's just the patience is required because you're gonna be going through layers and layers and doing a lot of gathering. All right, so I will tell you how to do all that gathering and how to cut the pattern to get that kind of volume. First, well, the dress in more detail. All right, so what we've got is, um, it's got a low V-neck, very, very low, um, an under bust seam, and then I would say, and it's also got a waist seam. The tulle layer over the top covers the, these two parts of the under layer straight over, and then it's got that little uh, tie which pulls in under the bust and another little tie that goes around the waist and then we've got all this fullness and a big ruffle. It's a V at the front and a V at the back with a centre back zip and a puff sleeve with a cuff. So um, if it would depend on your experience level about how easy you're going to find this. Um, I'm a professional dressmaker with some experience working in tulle and if I was making this dress for myself, I could probably make it in a day. A very long day with lots of curse words where the result probably wouldn't be, com well, it definitely wouldn't be completely perfect. Because if I was making it for myself, I wouldn't really bother with all the really, really fa fancy finishes. 
um, I'd just smash it together and if there was a panel where the strawberries or whatever motif I used was upside down <laughs> or something like that happened, it probably wouldn't worry me that much. So yeah, that would probably take me, yeah, let's say 10 hours to do. If a client came to me and said they wanted a dress like this made for them, I would probably quote them about three and a half days because we'd need to do fittings, I'd need to work out their exact size, I would draft the pattern from scratch rather than use a commercial pattern, and I don't know what the maths are on that. Okay, so one of the big disputes over this dress is that it's $490 US, um, which a lot of people say is very, very expensive. I personally think for the product that you're getting, it's actually quite cheap. For, you know, an independent designer's product, you know, this is not a fast fashion product, yeah, I, I think it's very affordable for the volume of the dress for a start. Um, yeah, I think the price is pretty good. And I also think that we shouldn't tell another woman what she's worth, which is basically when you're saying, I don't think your design is worth that, you are telling Lyrica Matoshi that she's not worth it. And that's not fair. Don't do that to other people. Anyway, little rant over. So if I was to custom make it for a customer and say just my labor for three and a half days and I charge a flat rate Australian of $35. Um, what's the maths on that? So eight hours a day, three and a half days at $35 an hour is $980 for a custom made chill dress. Uh, so it's $980 Australian and in Australian dollars, the Lyrica Matoshi dress is just under 700 at the conversion rate at the moment. So yeah, I think it's worth every penny. Um, and if you're going to make it and you don't have a whole lot of sewing experience, there have been a lot of other YouTubers who've made it to varying amounts of sewing experience. And what I'm gathering is it takes them generally about one to two weeks. So how, how much is your time worth that you want to spend one to two weeks on this project? And that's not including the cost of the fabric. That's just all the hours of your time. Um, sure, you can do a much simpler version. And yeah, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I really think that's a great idea. Uh, radio. So... We're going to have a little look at fabrics and I found, I know that other people have found these fabrics on Etsy. Um, I'm going to show you some on AliExpress. Um, AliExpress ships everywhere so it's convenient for pretty much everybody. Probably the main downside of AliExpress, well there's actually quite a few downsides, but the main downside is that shipping, like the free shipping usually takes a very, very long time. To Australia, I generally find, because I actually buy quite a lot of sewing stuff for my business through AliExpress, and I generally go with about six weeks. It'll take six weeks to get here. There are other shipping options if you need it quicker, and I have done that when, you know, going into production and I need something within, you know, a week or two weeks. But really, a week to two weeks is about, oh, it depends who it is, if they're going to go to the factory to get it and then on sell it to you then that's probably the best you can hope for is a week to two weeks. I did actually get some fabric very recently that surprised me because I didn't even pay extra shipping and that arrived maybe a week. I think it was about a week. It, I was really, really shocked because I was really expecting six weeks for this fabric. So yeah, time that it takes. The search function on AliExpress can be really, really difficult. And there are kind of tricks to that, but I'm not going to go into that now. If you want a video on how to shop on AliExpress, I will. But finding strawberry fabric, because it's trending, is actually quite easy at the moment, because it's trending. If you're going to try and find something more obscure, it's a bit more difficult. Um, the other thing is you really have to read the listings very, very carefully. There can be a little bit of lost in translation going on. Um, there also can be a little bit of, yeah, I don't think that's exactly true. And you've got to be very careful. Check your feedback. On these listings that I'm going to show you now, I haven't checked feedback for the stores or the product or any of that stuff. So it's up to you. I'm not taking any responsibility. It is up to you to check the feedback on those stores and make sure that you are going to get your product. I've never not gotten a product. Um, but I pretty much always buy things that have got a lot of feedback. 
preferably feedback with photos. But yeah, as I said, I have never not received something. And I've, I've bought quite a lot. I can't say that there was anything that was particularly bad. But yeah, really comb those listings. Make sure it's everything that you want it to be. All right, so the fabrics that we need, and I'm going to go through the quantity of fabric at the end and when we're talking patterns. Um, but what you're going to need for this dress, you'll need the underlayer fabric. So this is a non-transparent pretty much fabric that, you know, hides your modesty. Um, if you're going to do a really, really drapey version of this dress, then I'd probably get like, you know, a drapey fabric, like a rayon or a viscose or something like that. This fabric has probably got about the drape of maybe a cotton poplin. So something, you know, poly cotton, something in between the stiffness of cotton. Um, well, some cottons are very soft. Yeah, so it's in between a stiff fabric and a really soft drapey fabric. It's an in the middle fabric. If you really wanted this dress to stick out, then get a really stiff fabric for the underlayer. Okay, the next fabric that you're gonna need is a plain colored tulle, and that's gonna be the majority of your filling, the things that's gonna, mostly in the skirt, but a little bit of extra in the sleeves, the bodice. All right, the next fabric you're gonna need is your strawberry fabric or whatever embellishment you decide to go with um, over the top of that. Um, there has been a bit of a thread well, first I saw Rachel Maxey did the strawberry dress, but make it spooky and did a Halloween version, which is super cute. Again, I'll link that video down below. Um, but you could do, oh uh, yeah, I saw another thread on you, the strawberry dress, but make it 1800s. The strawberry dress, but make it dorky. I don't know, whatever, cottage core. It is kind of, yeah, anyway. You know, whatever theory that you want to go with to change the pattern, to be what you want and make it individual and kind of fun. Which I think is a great idea. So much more creativity in doing that than trying to slavishly copy something. Anyway, the next fabric, so we're on to fabric number three, is this outer layer motif fabric. Fabric number four and your final fabric is whatever's gonna make all these ruffly trims. Now you could use the tulle in the middle, your middle layer plain tulle, and do that, that'd definitely work. Or you can buy another fabric that's already cut into strips so that you don't have to cut it all up first. And I'm going to show you some of that as well, um, which, yeah, totally recommend. Okay, let's go. Let's talk fabrics. So here I am on my AliExpress um, wish list. This is my sewing wish list. It's currently set to private. I mean, all of my wish lists are, and there's like a whole bunch of random stuff on here. But if you want access to this wish list, um, just let me know and I'll unlock it and find a link or something. What I am going to do on this video is link all the things um, that I show you down below and try and work out how to do affiliate links. Because I've never done that before, and I just kind of want to know how it works. Um, which will mean, if there are affiliate links, that if you make a purchase um, sometime in the probably distant future, AliExpress will give me a small percentage at no cost to you, um, just for recommending them. So yeah, that's how that works, if I manage to make it work. All right, so lots and lots of ideas here. I don't think we've got time to go through all of them. But um, let's go through some basics. I'm not going to do the underlayer, like the first layer. I think that basic fabric of whatever color you want that is the, the lining, I guess. You could find that at any fabric shop. That's going to be super, super easy. What we want to find is all of our tools. And mostly, if you really want to do the strawberry dress, the closest reproduction I can find of that strawberry tulle. All right, but first, underlayers, and I've got two options for you. Um, I guess you can see the differences in them here. This is a soft tulle, and I mean, although this also says soft tulle, I don't know what an, an encryption net fabric might be. I feel that's a little bit of lost in translation. Um, this is a stiffer version. Like, it's very, very light, but you can see it gives a lot more structure, whereas this will be a lot more drapey. All right, so this drapey one. Here we go. Comes in lots and lots of colours. Um, and you get a 10 metre lot, which I think will probably be enough. Um, 
to do the dress or even too much. It depends on how much fullness you want in that skirt. I, I think this would be fine. $21 Australian for 10 metres of fabric is a pretty cheap fabric. And with AliExpress, I wouldn't be guaranteed that photos like this of made up garments of a fabric is actually that fabric. It could just be suggestions of what it could possibly look like. Um, so yeah, just be aware when shopping on AliExpress. Yeah, so there's that one. The stiffer one, let's have a wee look. $7.20 per metre much more expensive um but lots of really beautiful colors it looks like yeah that would be a great pick um oh that in those photos doesn't actually really look like tulle this looks more like trico yeah particularly when you see it in this shot fabric here so this would be a very different look altogether. Interesting. Um, this sort of pleated fabric as well that you see in the suggested recommendations or whatever, that would give you another different look, which could also be really pretty, like these two. Um, more floaty, and as you can see, more sort of svelte kind of a drape. Yeah, but some tulle suggestions there, although now that I look at this one a little bit closely, I don't know how great a recommendation it is. Uh, soft tulle mesh. Hmm, and they say it will give that look. Yeah, I don't think that that's the same fabric as that. Anyway, moving on, let's look at some strawberries. Right, so my closest variation of the strawberry fabric. So, yes, it's a glitter tulle. Um, so, this company does it in. Oh, see how these guys are grayed out? All of these colours are actually sold out if they ever existed in the first place. But yeah, so all they've got left on this store, I actually think I've got another listing, is the white with strawberries, glitter strawberries. But yeah, I think this looks like a pretty good interpretation of the fabric. Let's see if I can find the listing that I actually wanted. No. Ah, oh, poo. Maybe I didn't save it. That's a bit of a shocker. Um, I think I found it from here. Okay, this is actually what you would use for trim. Now, I know the trim on the original dress doesn't have strawberries on it. It's plain. Um, but if you wanted to make a plain dress with a strawberry trim, you could use this. And it comes in heaps of different colours. So it's basically just a long, long strip that's cut for you. It's 7.5 centimetres wide um, and you get 25 yards. So not heaps. Um, but I mean, that apricot colour, how pretty is that? And the spearmint. All right. And yes, yeah, so there's lots and lots of reviews on this one. So I think they look like a pretty reputable supplier. Do they? No, they don't recommend a full fabric. Um, Let's have a look at this one. Now that actually doesn't look like a very good glitter. That's a wider. I did find one. Oh, it was this one, I think. Yeah, it's exactly this one. Two meters for twenty dollars. So it's quite expensive. It's ten dollars a meter. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than what we've been looking at, but comes in all the colors, like black with red strawberries. How much fun! Yeah, that looks really nice let's see do they have feedback they have lots of photos so yeah nice close-up so yeah it's the glitter effect which i'm pretty sure is what's on the original um no feedback so mm, maybe it's just a new listing they're just taking advantage of the fact that it's going viral and and up to the price i'd say but yeah so you can do strawberries but there are other fun things um i particularly like these daisies um this is probably my favorite i think so this is very 1960s if you wanted to do a strawberry dress but make it 1960s i would go with this daisy tulle all righty next you could do stars and moons um which i think is really gorgeous there is if you've seen my other Dior videos, a very similar Dior fabric. 
which I think I've got on the list, but it's this one. Let's just go to this link. Um, yeah, I'll pop up a picture of what I'm talking about. Actually, that's a much larger scale, I think. Anyway, you could do this. Moons and stars and pegasus instead of strawberries, but to that same silhouette. There's dragonflies. Uh, now this, I, if you wanted to do the strawberry dress but make it 90s, I think you would use this. So this is a stretch mesh. It's a spandex tulle fabric. Yeah, you can see that in the headline there. Or cherries. Seriously, how 90s would that cherry mesh in that McCall's pattern be? Fabulous. Um, and sliced strawberries. Or black with white cherries. Yeah, I think that's really cute, that fabric. And we've got a couple of reviews. Not huge numbers, but still makes you feel optimistic. And again here, you could do stars. And let's do strawberry dress, but make it spooky, just like Rachel. Although a lot of these have sold out now too. Um, but this is very cheap tulle. It's very, very stiff, but it's very fun. Um, spider webs, um, spiders, very Halloween-y pumpkins, witches and bats. Um, <laughs> I, I do really like the red spiders. It's really creepy. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you could just keep going through all of the suggested fabrics until you found something crazy that you liked. All right, lastly, let's, I do like this daisy one. I've seen this one before. I think it's on that wish list, but I think that would be super cute too. And look at the colors it comes in. Um, that pink, the black, this red. Big poofy dress in that red would be great. Um, and the mint is really pretty, I think. Yeah. Um, lastly, sorry, I was saying lastly, and now I really mean it. Um, the strips of plain colored tulle for your ruffle. Here we go, let's look at this one. So this is, yeah, this is generally for decorating. They sell this. So when you're buying, just make sure it looks sort of soft enough for what you want. I mean, yeah, they've got the, well, they say you can make these pom-poms out of it and they look pretty, pretty soft. So I'd be optimistic or you could do a Lyrica Matoshi pom-pom dress or a snowflake dress like mine. I don't recommend it, <laughs> but you could because I mine, I've only got a sample left and otherwise it's sold out. So fair game, I guess. Um, it's not really how that works, but you know. Yeah, huge numbers of reviews on this one. Four out of five stars, so obviously feeling all right about it. And you get how much? 22 meters. So for a, you get 22 meters for a dollar and 43 cents, guys. That is cheap. That is a lot of very cheap plastic going on right there. Okay, so if you feel inspired, um, those links will be down below. On to the sewing tips, I guess. Now I want to talk patterns. Um, I'm just gonna, there is no perfect commercial pattern for this dress, but there are some kind of variations that you can go with. So as I said before, I think, unless I've edited it out. Anyway, the dress has a deep V-neck. Um, it has a midriff panel. The top layer, the tulle layers of the bodice go straight over that midriff panel. Everything joins in at the waist. And then it's got a big full skirt. So yeah, big, Full skirt, lots and lots of layers with the ruffle on the bottom. You don't need a pattern that has all the little ruffles on. Um, yes, it's got a puff sleeve as well. V in the back, center back zip. You don't need a pattern that has all the ruffles because it's really, really easy to add a ruffle to absolutely anything. But yeah, you will need kind of that basic shape. I would sort of say for any kind of reproduction you want to do, you at least need kind of a fit and flare. So uh, a wasted fit and flare, not even one that goes in a single panel, something with a waistband that sits on the waist. That would be your minimum to a very flared skirt. I mean, you could decide that your alteration that you want to make is a strawberry dress with a midi pencil skirt, which would be super cute. But yeah, if you want to do it like the picture, then a big flared skirt on it. Okay, the number one dress that I recommend is, and I've got my notes, um, McCall's 7974. Um, now I'm going to recommend it. It's not perfect. As I said, there is no perfect pattern as far as I can find. 
but I recommend it because, well, a couple of different reasons. One, the basic shape is perfect. Um, you are going to have to, if you want to, eliminate that button placket down the front and put a zip in the back or do a zip under the arm. And yeah, the back sort of needs that V shape if you really want that V shape. There is a yoke on there, so it is kind of going to get a little bit annoying doing that. You'd be be better off merging that whole thing into one pattern piece on the back. You don't need that yoke. And if you're not familiar with how patterns work, uh, that might get a little bit tricky. So I'd probably mostly leave it as is. And, and I actually think that little strawberry buttons down the front might be super cute and then the little ribbon over the top. Um, anyway, the other reason why I recommended this pattern is because there is a song along for it on YouTube. Um, Sean from Kittenish Behaviour has done a sew along for this dress and this is would be super super easy to use this as the base layer for your dress and alter from there on in and you would get something very very similar. Okay and also if you decide to keep the buttons you don't have to put a zip in and putting a zip in on all those layers of tulle might be really annoying. Might be really annoying. Um, the other thing that you could do, you could eliminate the button placket, add volume around the waist, and then pull it all in with elastic. Just put an elastic on so that you could just pull it on over your head. That would be the easiest version of the dress. Um, if you found a pattern for an elastic waisted dress um, with a gathered skirt and a v-neck, there's got to be hundreds of those. Um, if I find one in post, I'll put it here. That would be your simplest way to do it. Um, yeah, just a v-neck, elastic waisted, pull over the head dress would be your easiest option if you really need to, like, if you really want to make this as easy as you possibly can for yourself. And I don't blame you for doing that. Um, okay, so if going with the theme of do the strawberry dress but make it something else, if you want to do the strawberry dress but make it 90s, there is McCall's 8110 here, very 90s. <laughs> but you know, with all the tears and the little round neck instead. For this one, you need to get a stretch mesh instead of the tulle. Um, so yeah, if I find a stretch mesh, I'll, I, I will have already showed you the stretch mesh. I know where it is, it's all good. Okay, so the Strawberry dress, but make it a Reformation version. There's McCall's 8033. The strawberry dress, but make it 50s. I'm going to go with Butterick 6018. And the strawberry dress, but make it 40s, one of my favourites. Um, Butterick 2... Sorry? I've missed a number. Anyway, it'll be here. I really like this pattern. It's here. I'm about to make it soon. Um... And yeah, just add your ruffles and off you go. But it'll be a sleeker, softer sort of line around. So like a, instead of the puff sleeve, it's like a fluted sleeve. Which if you can't wear a puff sleeve, and not everybody can, particularly I think if you've got very, very broad shoulders, it might be a lot of dress. That might be a great option for you. Let's talk sewing tips, part three. All right, so you've pitch pattern, body fabric, um, how much fabric do you need to buy? Okay, so if we are going with that, okay, first let's work out how much fabric you're going to need. So I have some tulle here. Okay, different types of tulle. So this sort of tulle is what I would recommend and what I would personally go with and how I've done this dress, which is kind of soft and drapey but it's got a little bit of weight to it. Um, cheap stuff, sort of, if it says heavyweight or stiff, it's usually this, which is like, it'll give you a really pronounced shape, like a tutu, you know, um, and yeah, you can see it, like it, the folds um, are really open when you gather it. Um, then there is also, this kind of tulle, which is really, really light and practically see-through in this light. Um, but you can see that it's super, super soft. 
Um, this is possibly going to be really annoying to work with because it is so light and floaty, but it does give... All right, so it gives the gather that... Oh, where's this white piece, maybe? It has a certain amount of stiffness to it, and when it sort of catches on itself, you can see it sort of crinkles rather than falling heavy. It'll give you that... What is like... Midsummer Night's Dream Pixie from the 90s. Um, maybe a little bit of Helena Bomb Carter vibes. Um, who's... Kate Bush? Kate Bush? Yeah, it'd give you a Kate Bush kind of a look. Um, and something like this will give you a more floaty, closer to the body. Still lots of volume, but closer to the body. Anyway, whatever look you're going for, um, yeah, I've already given you... Well, or I will be about to give you. I'm not really sure how I'm going to edit this together. Anyway, some examples from AliExpress of all those fabrics. So, how much gather do you want to put on your tulle outer layer? So, what we're doing is, like this is the outer layer. Say, imagine that it's pink with strawberries on. And it's going to sit, you know, on the bodice from here and gather down into your, and it's going to go straight over your under layer, which you would have already made to that pattern in your poly cotton or whatever. Um, and then this will go over the top and come straight down to the waist. So you want to work out how much gathering you need to get the effect that you want. So what I did is cut a piece of fabric here. This is 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters two running stitches on the machine. Um, I say do two lots of running stitches. So it's a straight stitch, the longest stitch length that you've got. And I say do two layers. Um, one, it, it delivers a prettier gather. And number two, if one layer breaks, you won't cry immediately because you'll still have one layer holding it together. And when you're doing those massive ruffles around, massive ruffles around the bottom of the skirt, very good chance it's gonna break been there done that anyway so then we're going to gather it in grab two lots to where you think um, the gather is enough for you so I when I gathered it in before and you saw the sample as it was before and I'm now really butchering it trying to hold it up to do it and not getting an even gather across it all we're almost there but I gathered it down to 10 centimeters and thought it looked pretty good so 10 centimeters look pretty good, which means I need twice as much fabric um, as the under layer. Twice as much for the top layer as I do for the under layer. So, I mean, make sure you do this test. If you are going to use a gathering foot or a ruffling foot, um, if you've got one, you'll know what that is and how it works. I would still do this test to find out at which level the gathering the ruffler foot is going to produce the right gather and how much fabric you're going to need to have it in because you'll need that to make your over layer pattern okay so where was I? we have all right so this is the amount of fabric that i think you'll need and how to work it out so if you have the mccall's pattern that i've suggested before so let's say this is our base pattern and you can look on the back of the pattern and it will tell you for the version that you want um, how much fabric you're going to need. So that's how much fabric you're going to need for the under layer. Now I think for my size it was about three and a half meters of fabric for the under layer for the skirt length that I wanted, which I think is the view that you see in the main picture. Um, but obviously you're going to change the sleeves, but that's the skirt length that you want. So that's the amount of fabric that you're going to want, or that I would want. So that's how much you would need for the under layer. All right, for the second layer, so the plain tulle, I'm thinking you're probably gonna need at least two layers of that plain tulle underneath your strawberry tulle. So, and then you're gonna need twice as much because our gather is twice the density. Um, so that is, uh, what did I say? Three and a half times two is seven. And then for the two layers, 14. Really? 14 metres. Yeah, 14 metres of that plain tulle. Ouch. Okay, tulle is cheap, but 
but that's just going to be so much fun to cut all of that out. Um, I would be seriously considering reducing the density of my gather for that. Anyway, for the top layer of strawberry fabric, you only need one layer, so that's three and a half times the two, the double density of the gather. So for the top layer, seven meters. And then you're going to need to buy the um, the tool for the trim. And that comes in like those rolls of 100 meters or whatever it was that I've already showed you. And so get one of those because um, it's already pre-cut and it'll make your life much easier. And for the bottom, I would use it as the length that it is, just two layers maybe. And for the cuffs and the neckline, I would fold it in half and gather it from there so it's half the, the length, just one layer. So you get two layers, but it's just one piece folded in half and then gathered and attached. Yay. <laughs> See what I, I mean about, do you really want to do this? <laughs> but you know, if this is a fun project for you, and I'm sure I've thought of equally crazy projects in the past. I know I have. Yeah, I definitely have. I don't blame you. Go for your life. Um, for the little ties, you don't need a separate fabric for that. You can just cut a strip of the tulle. It will curl on itself. Um, and that, I mean, you could sew it into a tube and pull it inside out and then you'll have a sewn tube and that would be a really nice finish. Or you could just let it curl on, on itself and sew that on and tie it. It's up to you. Um, yeah, so one piece comes up higher than the V and ties and then the next piece around the waist and ties. And you have a strawberry dress. All right, so probably the last thing to cover is how are you going to make those pattern pieces for the overlayers because they need to be twice as wide or whatever your ruffle measurement was um, as the original pattern. So what you're going to do, all right, let me make for a second my original pattern. that this is the bodice pattern piece from your pattern. I don't have the pattern or I would just pull that pattern piece out. But yeah, so this is, then you've got your underbust piece here and then your skirt comes out here. So this is just the bodice piece that we're gonna do. So, what we need is for this pattern to become twice as wide as it was before to account for all the gathering that's gonna go across. Okay, right, I'm just going to plot out the um, bodice pattern with all the gathering in it. So the whole point here was to teach very, very briefly, sort of slash and spread to get more volume in. But I realised when I drafted, well I draped this pattern piece to show you how it was done, that um, you actually need both pieces together for the bodice. You need the bust part and the bust part together um, because in the strawberry dress it's all draped together. So I've used the pieces from this pattern which I've just done um, to illustrate, <laughs> sorry I had to just knock a ruler off the table, <laughs> to illustrate this. Um, so yeah, so that's the under bust part. I've put them both together for this pattern but you only need so centre front line I've marked the center front line on my paper. Um, I eliminated the, covered up the seam allowance. So the seam allowance is 1.5, and so that's about three centimeters there, and joined it on this side so that the side seams continue as one with about three centimeters there. It's probably a little bit longer. Now, the fullness on this is sort of gathered under the bust. Um, so to create it all one piece, you have to kind of eliminate that fullness. But because we're adding fullness anyway, um, it doesn't really matter. 
The only thing that might be a problem is if you've got quite a large bust and you need the length to go from the top of the shoulder down to the waist in the fabric because you are losing, so that's your normal seam allowance way. If I pull it down, you're probably on this one losing about a centimetre in length. And you could add that back in again, say through a, a slash line here, or and just make this like a centimetre longer, or you can add it in under here. Um, on this one at the shoulder, I would probably add it in. That, that would be really easy. Um, okay, so we just trace off. pattern piece it might be helpful to mark the bus point in and it kind of always is on a pattern because you never know when you'll go back to it and need that and just right there is actually the waistline waistline and center front um, and yeah if you wanted to add that one centimeter in probably go like this so already that is moving at one centimetre up and then my line goes up to here. And yeah, if you were connecting a sleeve onto this, you would add the one centimetre of length into the sleeve as well. So then you would get more length over the bust if that's what you needed. Um, well, yeah, so that is our new pattern piece. A little bit winky, but is as I said just to show how it's done um, right so to do the slash and spread we would mark the lines that we're gonna do it okay and we need to know the width of it didn't bring a Measuring tape, all right. So across at this point, it is this wide, and we're gonna to need to make it twice as long as that. Cutting it out. T-line holders, they're the best pattern weights going and you can find them at op shops very easily. Alrighty. Alrighty, so that was a very, very rough slash and spread, but as I said, chill is pretty forgiving. So what you would just be doing is cutting out this piece of chill, laying it over the top of the um, underbust dress that you've already made that is fitted and the right size, and then with your gathering stitches, gathering it all in over the top and then this piece so that is a very rough slash and spread and that would be the new bodice piece and you would be gathering it all the way across here 
all the way across here and pretty much all the way around as well. To your sleeves. So everything except for these, that's your center front body and your side body. There we go. So a very basic slash and spread to make that piece twice the size that it should be and then you would be placing your little ties over the top once all that's on the original and yeah as I said so I would have it this piece goes over the top and then don't attach your skirt yet until you've done all of your bodice and then start worrying about the skirt. Yay! Alrighty! Okay so I hope that was helpful. Um, yeah, those are my best sewing tips. So for the pattern, slash and spread, for the gathering, two lines of gathering, make sure you measure it out. I would, yeah, twice as wide would be ideal, but it's going to be a lot of fabric. Um, yeah, my also, my ultimate tip is, I guess, make it your own. Change something, make the line a bit more flattering for you, make the colour a colour that you'd rather have. Make the embellishment something different, like I really liked the 60s daisies. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, um, yeah, give me a thumbs up. If you want to know more about um, shopping on AliExpress and the sewing supplies that I buy on AliExpress, yeah, just chuck me a comment about that. Yeah, anything else you want to know? If you are attempting to do it and you've come to a stumbling block, yeah, chuck me a comment and I'll see if I can help. Um, yay, so you're enjoying your weekend, evening, day, week, whatever. Anyway, stay safe everyone. <laughs>